Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon, gentlemen. How are you all? Waalaikum assalam, sir. Kaise hain, sir? Main thi bol lagaya shukr kar sun bol raha. आप बताएं आप ठीक हैं यस सर अलहमदुल्ला ठीक सर गुड हो गया ओके गाइस सो वी आर गोइंग टू रिवाइज अवर यस्टरडेज लेसन ओके मीन वाइल द अदर पार्टिसिपेंट्स विल जॉइन सो what we were discussing yesterday we were discussing we actually discussed our element 5 of limit ig2 and uh, before element 5 we had a brief introduction regarding the ig2 that it is all about hazard recognition and their control in which our first element was physical and psychological hazard what did we discuss we started discussing about noise who are the workers getting exposed with noise what are the profession in which the people or the worker they get exposed with the noise then we move to the noise effects what are the effects Temp there are some physical temporary effects permanent effects and some psychological effects then we had seen that how our sense of hearing works and how it gets damaged then we discussed different terminologies inclu including sound pressure decibel frequency a weighting and c weighting which is impulse noise then uh, we discussed about the decibel level and after that we moved to exposure standard that in case if we uh, get to know about different noise level what are the standards what we have to do what would be our approach in controlling these noise hazards then we move to uh, personal noise exposure limitations that what are the daily exposure limitations and then exposure action values uh, for uh, sorry over here yeah exposure action value then a lower exposure action value then upper exposure action value where we need to think about uh, to take some action and then limit values which is the final or the ceiling value after which you cannot get expose yourself with the noise hazard any way then we discussed what we can do if we are having lower exposure action value what kind of control we will be implementing over there in case if we are having upper exposure value what are the control measures we are going to take then we move to exposure limit value that what we will do in case if we get to know about we are reached to exposure limit value after that there was a group discussion basically was an assignment uh, then we move to the basic noise control measures first we discuss that how we get exposed with the noise usually from the machinery three ways we are getting exposed one is structure path one is direct noise path the other one is the reflected noise path and then we discuss that how we are going to control the noise at the source at the pathway and at the receiver that we need to protect the receiver then we discussed about the hearing protection including hearing ear defenders or muffs and the second one ear plugs we discussed the advantages and disadvantages of both after that we move to the hearing attenuation that how we can reduce the hearing noise or how can we make it weakened then we move to uh, the health surveillance regarding noise that what is the role of health surveillance how do we do that what do we get then finally there was an assignment regarding the noise that was at the end of noise module then we move to our next module that was vibration in vibration module what did we discuss we started discussing the hand arm vibration then we move to the whole body vibration and then we discussed how we are going to control it at which regulation is uh, guiding us about uh, vibration and this is control of vibration and uh, control of vibration at work regulation 2005 and then we, then we discussed uh, the daily uh, the daily exposure action value for the noise the daily exposure limit value for the, sorry for the vibration 
and uh, then what we have to do in both of these scenarios in case if we get exposed with the daily exposure action value what we will be doing what steps we will be taking to control the vibration exposure then in case if there is some uh, if in case if the limit value is reached then what steps we will be taking to control and um, then uh, there were some basic vibration control measures we started discussing again from the reduction of vibration at the source interrupting the pathway duration and the and protecting the person then again the same uh, health surveillance which we had made for the noise we have done it for the uh, vibration then we move to the radiation where we discuss different kind of radiation ionizing radiation non ionizing radiation ionizing radiation including ultraviolet visible light infrared microwaves radio waves we have seen that what are different types of non ionizing wave uh, radiation what are their sources, sources and what are the health effects there was a discussion basically or a kind of group exercise regarding the uh, noise uh, sorry regarding the radiation then we move to uh, the control of non ionizing radiation how we are going to control it then we move to the type of uh, ionizing radiation and uh, we have seen that we are having different kind of ionizing radiation what are the health effects where we discussed about the acute health effects as well as the chronic health effects then we move to the basic control time distance and shielding after that uh, there was a group exercise we discussed about it and then we discussed different uh, dose limit on exposure in case if we get exposed with the hazardous the radiation then there was a type of radiation basically it is the gas radon gas which is containing alpha particles we discussed that how it is harming us and how we can control uh, how we can get control over it then uh, we discussed some basic radiation protection which is uh, some strategies which are applying to all kind of radiation protection and uh, yes this one uh, and then we move to the health surveillance then uh, our 5.4 module that was about mental ill health in which we discussed anxiety depression work related stress we discussed how do we get it how we are going to control it then uh, we discussed the six control measures uh, for anxiety for stress for depression starting from demand control support relationship role and change after that there was an assignment okay and then we move to the work related violence that if you are working on the on, in a place where you have to take decision or you are having the chance to make decision then what kind of work related violence you can have then we discuss what are the risk factors for the violence or for the people who are handling the cash non working police officers social worker bus and taxi drivers firefighters these are those guys who are having the risk and then we discuss two different control measures for two different areas one is for central office one is for the all those who are conducting the home visit finally we move to our final module that was about the substance abuse at work in which we discussed what are different kind of uh, substance which can be abused at work then what are the general signs and symptoms what are the effects on safety performance and how does they increase the risk uh, how do they increase the risk for the other people and uh, finally we discussed about the control measures and uh, policies regarding drugs and alcohol it was our yesterday's lesson and uh, i hope so there was there is no question from yesterday's session and now we are going to move our next topic that is our mod element 6 of unit ij2 this is all about your muscles health your musculoskeletal health what is that how do we get different kind of uh, hazards related to our muscles what are those hazards in case if we are doing some kind of manual handling what is that mechanical handling what is that how do we get effect on our muscles even if we are doing the mechanical handling what is that we will discuss in this module sorry in this element what are the learning objectives learning objectives are uh, 
will be able to describe the work process practices that may give rise to work related upper limb disorders and appropriate control measures what are upper limb disorders from your waist height to up okay up to your uh, shoulders we call it upper limb upper limb dis upper limbs and uh, if we are doing our job and we get some disorders here okay maybe i get some pain here here maybe here okay we call it a work related upper limb disorders then we'll be able to describe the hazard and control measures which should be considered when assessing risk from manual handling activity in case if we are performing the manual handling when a man handles something what kind of hazards do we face you'll see and uh, then uh, we will be moving uh, towards the hazards and controls associated with load handling equipment and the requirements for lifting operation like uh, easy words we will be moving towards the mechanical handling okay and uh, this is our uh, our course would be very short uh, for today uh, and let us start discussing our first module that is work related upper limb disorder when we talk about work related upper limb disorders we can also call them musculoskeletal disorders different names are there but for me both are same but yes somehow there is difference we will see what is that difference okay first thing comes first uh, remember first important thing during your work you can overload your bodies and can lead to injuries like muscles ligament tendons bones in which you can get strains and strains we call them musculoskeletal disorders what are ligaments we'll we'll see by the way over here there is something which we call ligament okay ligament is basically the part of tissue which binds the muscle with bone okay and that is what we call a ligament and uh, then uh, over here we will be discussing about musculoskeletal disorders what is musculoskeletal disorders first a collection of injury to the skeletal system and the soft tissues associated with that system for example injuries in the tissues okay injuries in the tissues we call them musculoskeletal disorders if it occurs in your skeleton as well as in your tissues the next is back injuries and back pain for example back muscle strain ligament damage and disc in injury in case if some kind of fault occur in your backbone simple then the next is work related upper limb disorders commonly we call them rules for example carpal tunnel syndrome and uh, tenosynovitis i yesterday i explained you about the carpal tunnel syndrome and tenosynovitis is when your muscles get hard like a kind of cramps next is other chronic soft tissues injury uh, associated with some kind of long sitting standing or or kneeling for longer periods of time at work depending upon your job in case if you are having these practices then you can have these kind of uh, soft tissue in injuries moving further uh, what are the high risk activities or repetitive operations in which we are having these kind of disorders or injuries display screen equipment use for example electronic screens computers panels including this includes by the way all those panels which are included or which are installed in your machines for example a panel installed in the crane for example a panel installed in the lathe machine okay so in case if we have all these over there yes display screen equipment and by the way what we are doing now what we are using now these, these are these are basically display screen equipments keyboard operation everyone knows about that factory assembly of small components means packing industry you are doing something again and again although it is not very hard although it is not very tough job it's simple it seems very simple you are packing something perhaps you would be packing some 
a kind of mobile phone but because you are repeating it again and again so that is why uh, you can have these kind of uh, injuries then supermarket checkout operation you are picking up something you are putting it over there picking it up scanning it putting it up there picking it up scanning it putting it there and the guy who stands beside you he is putting all the things in the shopping bags so these kind of small uh, jobs by the way seems very easy but these are dangerous in terms of work related upper limb disorders okay then uh, brick laying in the construction of course you are um, uh, performing the job for the brick laying okay this is uh, usually everyone knows what is brick laying in the construction we are constructing the walls so this these are the activities which are basically giving us work related upper limb disorders now for msds or musculoskeletal disorders what are the risk factors involved we are having three main risk factors what are those task factors by the way we will be discussing them in details okay regarding load individual task and environment but right now we will be having a brief overview about that task factors what kind of task in case if you are having a repetition in case if you are exerting extra force you are hammering something okay poor posture you are not standing straight for example a person who used to wash pots on the utensils on on the sink all the time so he might not be standing straight and performing his job all the time he is bent a little bit and uh, he his posture would be bent in this way for example then a twisting just like i explained you the task is to twist something picking up something here and putting it over there then in case if you don't get a rest in during the task so these are the factors which are basically make you tired and of course based on the capacity or the power of your muscles uh, you get injuries next is equipment factors in which we are having design or adjustability what is that we will be discussing about this in the ergonomics what is basic excuse me guys okay not official i'm sorry about that i thought someone is sending me official messages okay <clears throat> equipment factors in which we are going to talk about design and adjustability design and adjustability means if i am operating a crane what are the controls where are these these are in my access or every time do i have to lift uh, do i have to leave my chair and i have to go over there to operate something or to go over there left right to operate the equipment or to adjust the things okay so um, th this is what we call equipment factor then environmental factors like lighting like glare which is what we call extra shine and then other factors for example temperature and uh, area okay the surfaces so these are basically different risk factors which are involving uh, different kind of forces and which are giving us musculoskeletal disorders or work related upper limb disorders now what we are going to do in case if we talk about uh, design and adjustability there is something which we call uh, ergonomics that everything when when i am sitting over here everything is in my access or not what about my hands what about the position what about the uh, what about my back if it is straight or not what is that i mean what are these things we'll discuss first important thing is ergonomic ergonomic what is ergonomics ergonomics is basically the relationship between me and my working station whatever the working station would be so this is ergonomic the relationship between you and let's say if this is your working station the relationship between you and your uh, working machine what in the word says let us discuss ergonomic is concerned with the interaction between people and tools equipment or machinery that they are using the workplace environment organizational factors 
in which the person is sitting and performing his job right so this is basically the ergonomics and uh, what what are the um, first we'll take a, an example a typical example regarding the display screen equipment of this uh, ergonomics what can you get what are the risk first of all work related upper limb disorder you can have the upper limb disorders you can have the back pain okay maybe you are having the back pain because you are bending and you are watching the laptop i strain would be one of them and fatigue and stress because of the job because of the even the news if you are reading for example and this is by the way our daily life we used to sit in a relaxed position okay and this basically gives us rules back pain eye strain fatigue and stress over here if you see uh, this example okay what aspect of a display screen equipment workstation would you need to consider to carry out a risk assessment in case if you have to perform the risk assessment what you will do come on who will come up and who will speak up for the risk assessment just i am asking you for the risk assessment Uh, the issue of the sitting back pain. Back no, just uh, yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Omar. You actually uh, reached to the depth of the question. I'm not asking about the question which is displayed in front of you. Just wanted to ask the question. Yes, Mr. Vijay. Just wanted to ask the question about the risk assessment. Just to recall that, Mr. Vijay. Yeah. Uh, see, uh, I believe here. Uh, see uh, they are uh, uh, stitching i mean they are kneeing so there's it is uh, the uh, the item are not organized very well in that okay table. fine fine sorry to interrupt uh, mr vijay sorry, now i understand uh, what you need uh, there is uh, the, now we list the activity that you are going to do then uh, like what they are the list of activities then we will do the uh, hazard then the control this is very nice yes fazan I am just asking about the risk assessment stuff. Just Mr. Omar has told us one, two, three. Fezan, please. Just to be, uh, if uh, just your question is that just if we will prepare the risk assessment, so what we will consider in this? Actually, I am not getting your question. What is this? My question was just to recall the risk assessment steps. <laughs> Just to recall the risk assessment steps, Pradeep, you were saying something. First of all, we will identify the hazards. Identification of the hazard. <laughs> then, uh, <laughs> yes. Identify who might be harmed and how. Second will be oh. Then, come on. Identify the hazard. Who will say all these? Who will organization that? Uh, what's uh, identify the hazard? Identify who might be harmed and how. <laughs> Evaluate the risk. Yes, Shanwas, and decide on precautions. Okay. Eliminate uh, uh, evaluation. Identify the hazard. Uh, Safe working procedure. Uh, who might okay. be harmed and what are the control measures we are going? To? Okay. Are the existing control methods and what we are going to make it more to control the safety measures and then we'll okay. calculate the matrix according to that okay thank you thank you yes, sir. guys the basic steps for the risk assessment are identify the harm oh sorry identify the hazard identify who might be harmed and how evaluate the risk and decide on precaution then record the significant findings and finally what was the final step come on tell me finally audit what review review finally review 
so these were the these were the steps of the risk assessment okay now based on the risk assessment over here there is a question question says what aspects what factors what are the angles okay of uh, the way you are watching it what aspect of a display screen workstation would you consider would you need to consider to carry out a risk assessment this is your display screen equipment this is to deviate you to divert you there is nothing display screen equipment work there environment just, okay yes work environment very nice come on just now we have discussed our second topic just in back slide ha uh, so what are those th those things work environment load individual task environment right what did we discuss now we discussed all these task factor environment factors uh, sorry equipment factor environmental factors so we are going to discuss in this in the display screen equipment we will be considering the display screen lighting the noise um, leg room window in case if i am having the window what about the software installed over there keyboard work surface work chair these are all the things we will be discussing clear yes, sir okay clear for everyone now sir can i ask one thing if you yes, will please allow. yes yes please uh, but still we have not received the uh, lectures of uh, two days last uh, fezan actually uh, two or three times it happened that i just got the disconnectivity because you know once you upload these things you have to stay connected over here with the internet two or three times it happened that i had to pick the laptop and i had, i had to move outside because since two days i am not uh, staying in the home uh, like uh, in the morning time usually i used to stay outside because of my training sessions so two times it happened that when i came back because when i was moving i did not think about that i'm in the connectivity so when i came back uh, the progress was nothing i mean every, all the progress over zero inshallah by today you will be having it yes sir no issue i should have done it yesterday's night but i was tired so i thought okay i'll do it by tomorrow morning <laughs> that was my fault okay uh, now over here uh, regarding the control measures what are the control measures we will be going for the workstation assessment in the in the in this huh? in this rules back when i strain fatigue regarding the display screen equipment okay we will be going for the workstation assessment okay provide basic dsc workstation uh, station equipment to minimum standards so that you can at least adjust the uh, dse as per your requirement okay and uh, you have to plan the work routine that when do you when you will be sitting on the on the dse what kind of work you have to do and when you will be leaving okay the dse uh, if we talk about the workstation by the way we will be check, we will be checking the display screen lighting noise uh, by the way I, i i have discussed these things uh, leg room window software keyboard work surface so we will be checking all these things then we will plan the work routine provide free eyesight test and spectacles if required no one does this by the way but yes in case if you are working the good organization then they will be giving you this provide information and training on risks preventive preventative uh, preventive measure for example ergonomic use of workstation yes usually we are providing the training on the ergonomics and you might have heard about the ergonomic training maybe uh, in your organization or someone would have given you this kind of picture 
okay over here what are the control measures here which are mentioned over here what do we have to with reference to point 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 as come on guys did did first tell me did you understand the question or no point 1 sit straight sit straight okay adjust your back okay point number 2 keep your screen away from as uh, if possible at the uh, fazan okay. over here here support your back in sitting position yeah okay nice point number 3 sitting sitting Ad adjust the seat adjust height adjust the okay. height yeah. yeah point number 4 His ergonomics is Next. okay. The he is ninety uh, degree maintaining and uh, the eye vision is correct to the system. Okay. So what is point number four over here? Uh, point number four. He is just extending. He has to go back a little bit. Okay. Fine. Correct and, seat height adjustment is and, required. And uh, point number ten. Uh, the wrist. Yeah. The rest resting of, of wrist. Resting of the wrist. Okay. What about point number five? Someone was speaking up. Come on, Mr. Ramesh. Five, five, five. Where it is? It's a little bit. Can you make up your slide? Make up. It is not visible. Maybe the tire or something. Five is not visible. Where it five is? Five is. Five is. Okay. Yes. Yeah. What is the slide which is visible to you? These are if slides are not visible to you. Slides are visible for everyone. Yes, sir. So what yeah, was no issue? What was the issue? Now is it visible? Point number five. No, sir. No point number yes, five. Yes, sir. Visible. Yes, yes. Maybe they need to enlarge the screen or something. Yeah, it's visible, sir. Yes, even yes. if even yes. is enlarged, it is visible only on the off part. Five. Uh, yeah, I can imagine that five is there in the down on round is visible, but completely not visible. Just a minute. Let it's me okay. It's okay. Mind. Anyway, we were understood that your five is there. Sir, uh, I need one small favor. Yes, please. Yeah, I'm just in office. I'm traveling, uh, moving from the office. Uh, if I reach the tower area, it's ten to fifteen minutes. It will take time. Okay, no problem. I'll be no off problem. during this period, please. Okay. 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 No problem. Yes, I'll try to check. I'll try to identify why the screen is not visible for you guys, because as per me in my system, it is displaying over here completely. I okay. am using laptop and it is visible on the laptop. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. no problem. Even in the mobile phone also, it's visible, sir. On the laptop, it's visible, huh? I'm also visible, sir, in mobile, sir. Okay, fine. Guys, please check the orientation in that scenario. Okay, fine. Uh, so, what the, what about the point number five? Sir, his foot is not a, in a proper angle, sir. Proper angle. So, what he has to do? He has to adjust has to them. Adjust them. Okay. He have to remove the the pedal, which is a uh, is uh, downside feet, sir. Okay. So he should be giving him uh, himself a good foot support, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And what if uh, people like me who are short? What if my feet doesn't reach to the? Uh, adjust the chair, sir. A chair, very chair, nice. chair. Index. Very nice. Very nice. But if I adjust the chair, then it moves down. Uh, my my screen comes up. Yes, sir. Then I'll be putting some kind of support downside. Okay. Okay, sir. Very nice. Uh, what about number six? Do we sir, have enough? 
enough space there enough space there is not a space proper space sir he can get a, uh, a hit by the table when he will uh, get up okay fine what about number 7 Keep your strength. Yes, arm rest should be there, and your angle of the arm should be okay. What about number eight? The angle of the keyboard should be proper so that you can easily be able to type. What about number nine? Yes. The screen. Never. The the disc this the the monitor screen. so that you can adjust as uh, adjust it as per your requirement and then uh, what about number 10 someone already have mentioned number 10 is all about the wrist rest that where you are going to rest your wrists clear yes sir okay great so let us move uh, further now Uh, these are the additional points uh, desk layout document holder could be there workplace lighting telephone headset and uh, for laptops like uh, you can use it for short duration only docking stations must be used breaks should be given to you and uh, eye test should be conducted so that you should not be having enough strain on the eyes you don't have to get the stress on your body clear and then we move uh, is uh, all these points are clear for everyone yes sir okay and by the way these are very easy things and routine things so that is why i'm just uh, i'm not explaining much because for example desk layout what about the desk layout sometimes we are having desk in in one in one uh, layout straight sometime we are having layout in this way l shape okay so that you can have everything in your access right so this is about the desk layout document holder you should be having the document holder by the way these are the office things which we are having on usually on uh, the or routinely on our job sites so we can have all these things remember this is all about the display screen equipment display screen equipment which gives you stress upper limb disorders over here now uh, let us move to our uh, next slide that is basically the end of module 6.1 and over here uh, this is all about this is all about uh, the session which we had discussed and this is your assignment number 1 by the way for today and uh, ah. clear so will abdullah today where is abdullah abdullah is not here today so will someone please take the screenshot and share it in the group so that the, so that the other participants would be able to see the see this assignment next is uh, our next module by the way let us discuss this one okay and uh, these all drawings over here i will be going to the disabling of the annotation i guess someone has shared it okay so question number 1 what are the factors increase the risk of musculoskeletal injuries so what are the factors we have discussed we have discussed let me take you to the slide so by the way these are repetition force posture we had discussed it what are the factors these are the main risk factors okay these are these are the risk factors okay repetition force posture twisting rest design adjustability lighting glare other factors like temperature so these are the factors which are the reasons or which are uh, increasing the risk of musculoskeletal injuries next what health effects can arise due to the use of display screen equipment okay what are the health effects work related upper limb disorder eye strain back pain fatigue and stress 
where did we discuss over here rules back pain eye strain fatigue and stress next is what control measures should be implemented to reduce the risk of display screen equipment okay so this one by the way control measures you should be defining i think uh, you will not the control measures are over here okay and these are the control measures the whole assignment i solved it now okay so now we are going to move to our module 2 so that is 6.2 which is manual handling by the way before we proceed to manual handling let me give you the overview of the whole uh, module 6.1 in 6.1 we discussed about the upper limb disorder upper limb disorder starting from here i mean from the shoulder height up to your waist height in case because of the use of some machine equipment repetitive motion exerting extra force if you are having injuries over here in this area tissues injuries ligament injuries and in injuries in your skeleton you are having the pain back pain so these are what we call musculoskeletal disorders and work related upper limb disorders what are these here we discussed about the musculoskeletal disorder back injuries work related upper limb disorders other chronic soft tissue injuries where you start performing the job repetition and for day to day you are getting sick but you don't know after some time it starts appearing and uh, what are the high risk activities or repetitive operations which we can have or which we are having by the way these we have discussed then we discussed about the main risk factors okay task factor equipment factor environment factor then we discussed about the ergonomics in case uh, or ergonomics is the interaction relationship between you and uh, your working station uh, your tools equipment machinery and then we discussed uh, the example of display screen equipments uh, injury you get usually if you are working on the display screen equipment there was an assignment not the assignment it was a group discussion then we discussed uh, what are the control measures how can we adjust our working station starting from the chair up to the dse and what are the control measures so it was our uh, first module okay now we are going to discuss our module 2 which is manual handling manual handling there are two kinds of handlings okay one is the other one is one handling is one whenever the man does some kind of handling using his hands we call it manual handling okay and the other one is mechanical handling or the machine handling when a machine is handling something okay these are two kinds of handling of equipment tools or sorry so these are diff uh, two different kinds of uh, handling uh, regarding the equipment or tools uh, or the material which we are carrying so if we talk about manual handling the lifting carrying pushing and pulling of load using your body force we call it manual handling there is a group exercise what do you think give me only two to three example what do you think what common injuries occur when carrying out a manual handling task when you are doing manual handling what kind of injuries you are getting back injuries we can go back injuries and sorry uh, back pain as well if we are back in. yes back injuries back pain come on that uh, or also we can say that in our knee knee injuries are there come on very nice sometimes we can get by the uh, manual uh, tools manual handling 
you can get hit by the manual tools okay once you are uh, using them yes yes you what, can get pinch muscle injuries muscle there is injury. some point yes. sir he can be get, get a cut in his hand or uh, or anywhere he can get cut in his hand yes okay very nice so these are some of the common injuries which we are getting because or whenever we are doing the manual handling these are also uh, some example back injuries for example once your discs are replaced or displaced okay or we call them prolapsed then tendon and ligament injuries tendon are muscle to bone and ligament are bone to bone connection okay so these are uh, uh, when we are connecting bone to bone okay this is what we call ligament when we are connecting muscle to bone this is called tendon so these kind of injuries we are getting muscle injuries hernias rules just we have discussed work related upper limb disorder cuts burns dislocation and broken bones this is what you have explained now so these kind of uh, internal as well as the external injuries we are having or we can have whenever we are doing some job with our hands using our body force we are pulling the things we are pushing the things sometimes we are lifting the objects or sometimes we are, after lifting we are putting it down so these are different kind of injuries we are getting now what can we do different manual handling techniques are defined in different ways okay over here we are having three steps you might have studied you might have learned manual handling techniques in different way or different teachers would be explaining you in different way all are valid the only thing what you have to do you need to keep your backbone straight you, you don't have to get it bent when you are picking up the load when you are carrying it or when you are putting it back so in keep keeping your backbone straight keeps you healthy what is mentioned over here before lifting you have to check the load if it is in my capacity or not plan the route of the carry if i am going to lift it up what is my route where i am going to go then establish a firm grip you have to establish a strong grip on the load so that it should not be getting fall down on your feet for example then the lift bend the knees and use the legs leg muscle to lift i'm not in front of you otherwise if you guys would be face to face with me then we would be doing it practically just maybe 5 minutes just to show you exactly how usually we are doing it and bending the knees and use the leg muscles so that keeping your back bone straight and you are going to lift something keeping the back upright keeping the load close to the body keeping the load close to the body will be giving you stability avoid twisting over reaching jerking you don't have to give jerk to your backbone to your other muscles or ligaments you don't have to jump okay you have avoid you have to avoid twisting okay or you have to avoid over reaching whatever comes in your capacity okay just do that then set, uh, sitting down or setting down use the same principle as uh, lifting when you are going to set the load down side use the same principle bend your knees bring the load down put it back maintain good balance set the load down and then adjust its position using the body weight these are good handling techniques but as i mentioned different teachers different trainers different standards are explaining it in different way so you will be using those the question comes over here that in case if we have to assess the manual handling handling risk what are the four main factors to be considered these are the four main factors which has to be considered usually we call them tile or light whatever you consider different uh, words are there to memorize them what is tile tile is task individual load and environment or what is light load individual task and environment both terminologies are used you can choose to memorize whatever you want okay over here uh, the same the same thing by the way we are going to discuss it identify the specific factors that would need to be considered to carry out a manual handling risk assessment 
whenever we are going to go for the risk assessment, keeping the five steps in our mind, identifying the hazards, what are the factors, what are the hazards, identifying who might be harmed and how, then evaluate the risk and uh, I decide on precaution, then record it and review it. So if we talk about the task, individual load and environment, regarding the task, what comes in the task, what is the height of the load, the repetition of the task, from which height you are going to pick it up, okay, repetition of the task, carry distance, stooping, okay, bending forward, twisting, rest break, rest or breaks, vertical distance above shoulder height or overreaching. If you want to see, if you want to think about the task, just consider those guys who are loading the trucks manually with small, small um, packages. They are loading the trucks. They are picking something from downside and they are going to put it up. Okay, starting from ground, they are they are putting the, I will try to explain it over here. Okay, they are, there are three different schemes over here. And three over here, which makes it nine. So you are picking the load from here. Okay, you are carrying it. You are putting it back here. Okay, you are picking it from here and you are putting it there. You are picking it from here and you are putting it there. In the same way, three would be from here, three combinations would be from here, three combinations would be from here. Just consider the people or the workers who are loading the trucks. This would be covered in your mind that what kind of different tasks those guys are performing. Okay, just consider they are picking small, small packages then everything would be clear for you that yes, sometimes the task is very hard. So all those factors, whatever the task, whatever the job those guys are doing, that, that is basically the task. Then individual, what about the individual? Unusual ability is required. What about the gender? What about the age, capacity or sickness? Guys, when we talk about the capacity, usually during the training of manual handling, I have faced these kind of questions that, sir, please tell us what is the numerical value regarding the capacity of a human? No, I cannot define about that. Why? We have to see these four factors, task, individual, load, and environment. If we just focus on the capacity, like 15 kilogram, like 10 kilogram, what about the size of the weight, the load size? A very famous uh, saying or a very famous, uh, you know, uh, question we used to have from each other. If we are having 10 kilograms of cotton and 10 kilograms of bot, which one would be heavier? Of course, both are of 10 kilogram, which, but on the other side, which one is hard to lift? Of course, the cotton because of its bulky size. Regarding the capacity, you don't have to focus on the capacity. Focus on load, individual, task, and environment. And if you are going to talk about the capacity, one more example over here is maybe 10 kilogram is very heavy load for me. But for you guys, perhaps you are using it in the gym to, to increase your muscle strength. 10 kilogram is exercise for you. For me, it's a very bulky, it's a very heavy load. Okay, so the, this is why capacity is all the time getting vary from person to person. You don't have to get, you don't have to fix it on a numerical value that a person can lift 10 kilograms. What about the task? What about the load? Right? What about the environment in which he is going to lift it? What about if we are having the humid environment? We'll discuss about the environment. Then significant risk to the vulnerable people. I mean, the conditions of the people. Uh, what about the expectant mothers, workers with pre-existing back injury? If someone is already having the back injury, then perhaps uh, five, seven kilogram is very hard for him to lift. Okay, and uh, you would have this, you would have uh, mentioned it in your local procedure that 10 kilogram is 
uh, a weight a man can lift so in that way it would be hard for the person who is already having the pre existing back injury next is the load we 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 were discussing the task then individual then we are going to discuss the load what about the load what about the weight of the load okay what about the size and bulk over here you can see size okay stability okay what about the center of gravity for example if you are having the liquid load which doesn't have any center of gravity water bottles are there when you move okay center of gravity keeps on changing okay what about the grip if you don't have any proper grip okay if the load is hot sharp edges are there then how you are going to lift that up so these are the factors we will be considering after that environment what about the space restrictions the space in which you are doing your job what about that if you are having very less space to move on then it would be harder for you and the the things the materials are stored over here you have lifted a bulky load and you are protecting preventing yourself from getting hit or getting bump right or left space restrictions are there what about the floor condition slippery or uneven the ground condition in case if there is some kind of changes in the floor level you are going in on the stairs what about the light levels light visible light then temperature humidity if you are having temperature and humidity your capacity remains half in extreme cold extreme hot environment both are not good okay humidity is of course everyone knows about rutuba it's not good for us in any way the next is uh, what can we do if we look into these four factors it seems that it seems that over here it seems that uh, manual handling is very hard we are getting injuries okay we are getting the injuries back injuries tendon ligament injuries muscle injuries hernias rules cut burns dislocation broken bones we although we are defining about the good handling technique but there are factors okay factors which are affecting our manual handling so in case if we are having these factors manual handling seems very hard but there are some control measures what are the control measures control measures are saying that we can avoid or minimize the manual handling risk how first by eliminating the manual handling for example if you are maghrib sala okay maghrib uh, sala how many slides are remaining only two or three slides ha huh? give me five minutes five more minutes or we will leave, uh, it would be too late guys it would be too late let's have a break okay and after the break we will be back and we will be first we'll have a review and then we will be starting from the same point let's go for sala thank you so much <laughs> 